everybody is okay with it, I would think we should move up the uh, representative for the insurance agencies to get their presentations first, if that's okay. Yeah. Okay, works for me. First one that we have is Farmers Union Insurance for Ryan Hoptal Agency. Service and then and build that into a plan that works for you going forward. 
uh, 24 seven access. I'm a, I'm a 36 year old who's glued to my cell phone all the time, so we're available. And uh, you know, I think most of our customers that, that, that we work with in the area would probably attest to that. I get some phone calls at 10 or 11 o'clock at night from, from people with questions or concerns or, or they have a need a claim situation and we're happy to take those calls at any time. So uh, we're available 24 seven and, uh, and happy to help. Uh, service. We, we pride ourselves on claims being, being uh, filed timely, service requests being, t being taken care of quickly, uh, so we can we can uh, you can rest assured that your insurance needs are being met. Uh, something we take a lot of pride in in making sure that things are getting done quickly, uh, answers to questions, and so so all of you can kind of get back to doing what you need to do with your uh, your daily jobs, and, and we can service the insurance part. And then giving back. This is something that uh, when I when I came to Hillsboro, Rich, Rich used to t say to me like, "Hey, you got you got to get involved. You got to do stuff. You got to be involved in the community." And and, and he has been for years. And he set a great example uh, for that. And it's something we kind of just kept kept doing. We're, we're we're happy to help. We feel like if you do business in a small town, you have to invest in your in your community through uh, certain leadership, get involved in it part of groups uh, like Rich has for years, like like I am with the golf course and, and uh, economic development and church and all the different things. Like we just feel like that's part of it. And uh, that's that's just a big part of our agency and something that we, we kind of like to hang our hat on is uh, it's it's up to us as business owners to help help lead the community lead the community forward. So um, why do we want to be in the agency the uh, insurance agency for the city of Hillsborough? Our, our agency mission statement um, is to provide comprehensive insurance planning for our customers while being good stewards in the community. And we think this is just another way uh, to, be, to be able to serve our community, uh, the people that we live with, that we go to ball games with, that we shop with, that, that, uh, that we do business with, is to offer a comprehensive insurance plan and work with the city on their insurance too. So uh, we're, we're excited about the opportunity. Uh, we think our processes and, and how we do things in our agency uh, can bring great value to you guys as a commission and the people that work on, on, the, on the business of the city daily. So uh, we just think that, again, our processes and how we do things would be a good uh, value to add to the city. So, questions? So. Thank you, Ryan. Okay, thank you. Next, we'll have Heritage, Heritage and her Insurance.
So we're a family-run business. Um, him and his wife are the presidents of the company. And uh, we really focus on uh, small town agencies and small rural communities. We have offices in 17 different communities across the state, mostly um, small communities. We do have offices in Fargo, Bismarck, Minot, um, but then mostly other small towns, Hillsboro, Maddock, Miller, Foreman, uh, Wishick, um, to just name a few. So definitely uh, uh, part of the community. Uh, Heritage brings a lot of experience when it comes to uh, insurance, especially uh, for um, municipality type organizations. We have many agents that uh, currently write many NDRF policies, uh, which is something that I lean on them for their expertise uh, to continue to provide the level of service that organizations um, and cities like yourself come to expect. So we would like to continue to provide that level of service, even though you know we are the current uh, agent, and we would like to continue, even though we are kind of new to Hillsboro. Um, our future plans uh, for our agency uh, in the area is is to be here long term, and, and that goes for myself too. Even though I do not live in the community, uh, we we bought some land across the interstate, and do plan to build a building. Um, as soon as we can when we find contractors. So we plan to be here in town for, for quite some time and, and I plan to be here quite some time and if, if the opportunity presents itself, you know, to be part of the community and, and, uh, and live here as well. But that's something to be seen, but uh, I don't plan on going anywhere. So um, I'm not new to insurance. Uh, I've spent uh, the last 10 years in the insurance industry. New to Hillsboro, new to the, the Heritage Group. So we would just like to continue uh, to provide the level of service that Lee Erickson has provided in the past. He is still um, part of our team to help guide us with our current customers through our transition period and then of course he'll always be around um, as long as he's around to, to help us uh, with any questions that we have. So we have expertise uh, with Lee still on board. We have expertise um, in the general insurance industry across all lines of business, commercial, farm, municipal, um, and health, life, every, every, we're a full service agency and provide every product that uh, you could possibly imagine. So with that expertise, uh, with our continued partnership with, uh, with the people that we purchased the agency from, uh, we just hope to continue to grow and be a part of this community and we really appreciate the opportunity to continue servicing uh, the city of Oak Grove. Thank you. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you. And last, we have the Irish agency. Thank you. My name is Shane Lark. I'm with Irie Insurance Agency. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity and the invite. Uh, my good friend Ashley uh, informed me. I got on the list, so thank you. A little bit about myself. Uh, I've been in business for 23 years. I specialize in municipalities, farm, and crop insurance, along with commercial insurance. Uh, we have seven locations across small town North Dakota. I live in Hope, North Dakota, personally. Um, and we have two commercial uh, customer service agents in the city of Hillsboro in our office, right by Subway. A little bit about our agency. We're nearing 50 years in the business. It is a family-owned agency. I am the majority owner, uh, but I also am a very active agent. And if you choose Irie Insurance, I will be your agent. Our most recent successful city that we've done business with was Devil's Lake. We've had West Fargo, but they're on a rotation schedule. I've also got the experience of being mayor of a small city. I was mayor of Page, North Dakota for uh, 10 years, as well as on the city council for another eight. So very well aware of what happens in small town North Dakota and city council. And um, uh, 
proceedings, what goes on. Uh, as you can see with the uh, brochure that we put together here, um, we are a full line insurance agency. We've got uh, 40 people strong, and uh, you have a, a commercial dedicated team of five underwriters uh, located in the company. We also have online portal access for uh, those customers that like to access their policy on their own. Uh, you can print a certificate of liability. You can get an ID card for a, a vehicle on a weekend. Um, and then my cell phone number is always on. So I appreciate uh, your consideration with that. Um, I'm gonna keep it simple. You know, we're selling ourselves. Uh, you're gonna be with the dirt. I've got 23 years experience with them. I'm very close to the board and Brandon Quinn is the CEO. And um, I've got the experience of uh, living and working in a small town. Um, any questions? Thank you, Shane. All right, thank you. Thank you. So we will... Uh, Go through the rest of the agenda if you guys are more than welcome to stay if you choose. Um, and then at the end of the meeting, where it's published, is where we'll decide how we want to proceed forward with our insurance. Is that all good? Good. So we'll go back to the agenda for our um, reading of the minutes from our last meeting. Someone has changes. Do I have a motion to approve the minutes from our last meeting? Is there a second? We'll second. Moved by Nicole, seconded by Paul to approve the minutes. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. All those in favor, please say aye. Aye. All those. I did that wrong. We'll try this again. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, same sign. Motion carries. Next item is the presentation of bills. Make a motion to accept. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Paul to approve the, the bills. Is there any other discussion? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, please say nay. Motion carries. Bills are approved. Next, we have our monthly disconnects for June. Do I have a motion to approve the disconnects? So moved. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Paul, seconded by Dave to approve the disconnects. Just for your reference, the EA that's on the front, that means that they got a payment from Energy Assistance that came in. So not necessarily that they paid, but it was a state payment. Any other discussion? Dave? Yes. Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Next we have the City Commissioner's Report. We'll start with Dave tonight. I have nothing tonight. Nicole? I have nothing. Paul? I just have just an update on the load controls. We're still getting calls in. We're still good for a couple weeks, but they are slowing down. So if there's people that haven't called in to get uh, registered, to get their scheduled appointments, these load controls in, please don't forget to do that. Uh, the more they do it ahead of time, the less they have to go contact and bug about doing it. So please be diligent about uh, getting that call made. And, uh, and like I always say, if you have issues, when you contact them or if they give you grief or say something that you're not happy with, 
we've got the city office know myself or Jim know so that we can address if there's any issues with it. But we need to have everybody call in. Even if you have natural gas here, we would appreciate if you would call in and let them know so they can take you off the list. Okay. Uh, do you know how many are left? Oh, what did we say this morning? A couple hundred? Yeah, I've got a two, two fifty. Mm -hmm. That's better than. But they've been getting, you know, they, they've been full the last three or four Mondays, you know, so. Good. And they're full for the next couple, so. Except for the 3rd of July, I don't think they're working, but. Uh, but we do, the, the gal did call me, now, he called me and said that they are slowing down. Okay. So we need to start picking them up again. So. Do you want to send out an update a list so that we can help if we see some of those? Yeah. We're, we're working on getting more updated lists. Once we get that together, we've been giving Sarah a chance to get caught up before we bombard her with that. <laughs> so I saw the announcement of that fee on the back of the card when it got mailed out. Um, how are we doing that digitally for those who have their accounts automatically hooked up? How do they get that? Um, there, we don't have it. We can send it in an email. Because there's, you know, well, technically there's nothing we, set up for that. We haven't approved it yet. We haven't approved it yet. Yeah. We haven't approved it yet. Yeah. Like we note, can talk more the about that. Yeah, there's a note. Like on the physical card, mm -hmm. you get it in yeah. the mail, there's a note on the back. But I don't know how others would find out about this yeah. if they don't get a physical they wouldn't. card. That's why we've been trying to use the newspaper and social media and other ways. We can't, there's really, I don't know what other way we can get hold of them if they're not getting it shown. Great, but we have to get it in the ordinance in our fee schedule in order for it to be able to take effect. So we, yeah. We no, we're talk. that part and just right. for people to know. Maybe if they, no. they don't know. From my perspective, you, you won't get charged. You'll, you'll know ahead of time before you'll get charged. And you'll probably just not want to do it or you're not doing it. But, but everybody's going to be made, made aware, in my opinion, through a letter or through a phone call or something. That's what I was we're, going to do, we're going to do our best to make sure that people that get that before they get charged, that they're going to have an opportunity. But we're not going to, if we leave messages with them or we send them letters and they're just not responding, you know, we have to make the next step. Just so do some people not physically get out. I don't. I don't. Okay. I don't. You can get it online. I didn't work. Okay. You can get, you can get yeah. your bill online, but it doesn't come. It's like you can sign your account up, and it, like your app, and then it automatically, if you have it automatically paid, you get a, a notice of any sort. But the physical card, I noticed it had one on the back. Yeah, not everybody gets a physical yeah. card. Oh, okay. Some some would get emailed to them. Some just go directly to their just pay online. Yeah. Can you check with PSN and see if we're able to email out to everybody that's on that? Yeah, I can check with PSN. Okay. Anything else, Paul? That's all. All right. Uh, well, one more thing. Thanks to the city for HBA, for the Hills, Hills Association. The Hills Board days went real well. Thanks to all the city did, putting out uh, barricades, helping with the tent, you know, moving blocks, everything you guys did, we appreciate it. Uh, the business association. Really appreciates the help and and, uh, and thanks again. Okay. Uh, first item that I have is we have a variance for.
they asked for a variance. What, 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 where is it going to be from the, the east? It will be sitting in the lot facing to the west. So that's the eight feet on the east side? Past the easement. So it'll be, you'll have your side, you'll have your sidewalk that would normally be there and then it's from that sidewalk or the easement edge, another additional eight feet. So you're just, uh, this is one right down by the... Right on the corner of the home yeah, that was so built. Yeah. So they're going to put the entrance that close to the street. Where's the entrance going to be then? On the west side. Could be facing the dollars. Yeah, facing the dollar general. How are they going to get to the garage that's there now then? They're adding a garage. I thought that's what they came in for, that garage. They're adding the garage on the north side. Where's it going to be from the current garage? On the south. back side of the lot, so on the south side. So it'll oh, be in the south east. Okay, yeah, south I'm west thinking west. of a different building. Okay, I'm thinking of the one that's putting one on the other side. So, gotcha. I think they're going to have They've already done some of that. They've already, yeah. they've already taken out shrubs, but. Um, All right. Which reminds me, I'll have to make sure on that building permit that they paid for the curb cutting. Yeah. So, um, like I said, planning and zoning did approve that with the variance for eight feet. If so, request a motion for approval of that variance. I make a motion. Nicole makes a motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Seconded by Dave for an eight foot variance for 410 West Caledonia. 421 West Caledonia. Is there any other discussion? They, they, they're knocking the curb out and then they're replacing it themselves. They're putting it on like dig that they put in the driveway and do that. I would have so the driveway. Yep, and that's what the deposit's for, because if it doesn't get fixed, then we use that to pay for it. Okay. Any other discussion? Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. With that, um, planning and zoning is looking at updating the ordinances. So like I said, they in one spot it was five feet that says um, accessory buildings are five feet from the property lines. And then in another part of the ordinance, it says that it's a 10-foot side yard. So there's some confusion. We just need to get, and that's one example. So they're going to go through and double check, and JR's going to pull something together so they have something to go from. So, so they're not starting from scratch. And then with that, I need the approval to appoint Paul Brown to the Planning and Zoning Commission. He uh, did agree to be seated on that to fill one of those spots. I'll make a motion. Is there a second? I'll second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Paul to appoint Paul Brown to the Planning and Zoning Commission. Is there any discussion? Dave? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Uh, a great addition. He will be, yes. He's brought, he has some years of experience in construction. So that does still leave us one seat open from the extraterritorial zone. So anybody within that half mile radius outside of the city limits. I had an individual come to me on the 400 block, or the, excuse me, the, two, 100 block, yes, 100 block of 4th Street and 3rd, so it would be the block between 4th and 3rd and 4th and 3rd Street and 1st and 2nd Avenue. It'd be in the northeast part of town. It would 
be in the same block as the property that we've been dealing with for a long time. And it deals with the alley getting blocked and being blocked. Who's blocking it? A lot of the neighbors. More than one. And so the one that came up and talked about it, um, there's some issues with vehicles being pushed around and moved and other stuff that is out there or trailers being parked in the alley. And so I did look into it a little bit farther and we, the alley is a dedicated alley so this, it is under city guidance or city ownership in that part, that particular block. With that being said, there is items, property, and so on and such forth that is on city property. So with your approval, I'd like to have JR draft a letter to those that have items on that property and then have it removed or we would go in and remove it. Because it is on city property, not the individual's property. Make a motion out of that, huh? Is there a second? Second. Moved by Paul, seconded by Nicole to have that letter sent. Um, and then we'll give them timeline to get it completed. Is there a suggestion on the time? Whatever the norm is, I don't know what that, something like that would be, Jared. That's, that's pretty important to me. I want to make sure that, you know, we get the people out the time to get their things together and that they're aware that if it's put back there again, you know, or if something is put there, we want people to know that we're going to give them the opportunity to get it moved, but we don't want it put back in a month or six months. And, uh, you know, I want people to be well aware that hey, you, you knew you weren't supposed to put anything here, you did it anywhere. And you knew for two weeks or whatever it is, and you had to get this out of here, and you didn't, so don't get mad at us. That's, what I, that's my most, the most important part to me is, is hey, you were told, you knew. If we gave 30 days, is that plenty of time? Or 15? If they're just moving things out of the alley, I would think 15 days from when they get the letter would be more than that. Okay, so 15 days works. And this is a one time thing because then it'll be after that, it'll be 48 hours it needs to be is our general guideline. So. Well, and like I said, they're going to be aware of it. So yep. we'll put it back. Yep. Is there any other discussion? Okay. Nicole? Yes. Dave? I'm going to stay from the vote because I haven't seen, I haven't even seen it, so I'm, I'm, not, I'm going to stay in the vote. I can show you if you would like. Some stuff has been moved, but not a majority of it. The last I looked and I said I hadn't looked today, there was a spent block that was sitting partially in there. Um, a lot of different items. There was a car that was in there that that has since been moved, and the trailer has since been moved. So you're sending a letter to 
other individual besides the one we're working on. Correct. Anybody that has anything in that alley. Okay. Are you still abstaining, Dave, or would you like to vote? Uh, I'm, yeah, I'm going to abstain. Okay. Paul? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. It's more of a notification thing. Okay. Our live stream is down for a little bit. Apparently our computer is starting to restart on its own. So if anybody in the crowd would like to uh, stop me the answer. You know, while we're killing time here, coming up. You're coming back on here. <laughs> <laughs> Thankfully, yes. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it might be the difference between getting the insurance, right? All right. Um, that is all I have. So the next would be Jim. Do you have anything to say? No, I don't have anything to say. Okay. JR? Uh, nothing for me as attorney, but I will note as the HBA president, I thank you very much to the city for all of your help with everything for Hillsborough Days. I think everything went off very well. And just thank you to every volunteer, every person I helped in any way. It was just great to have it this year. And nice weather. Yes. <coughs> Sarah? <coughs> yes, I do. <laughs> okay, so um, I'm not sure when, but Ashley applied for that, um, the snow removal grant, <clears throat> and we did get approved for that. Um, for the early snow, we got um, $21,738.36 um, from that. And then um, the, all the ones that you guys decided to send in to collections, that was sent in, and we did get a notice back from them that they are working on that. And that's all I have. Thank you. Anything from the Sheriff's Office? Okay. Uh, I did forget one thing. I need to go for a transfer for $53,503.92. That would be coming out of the electrical fund and going into the Riverwalk fund. Uh, I can, those are from the repairs that were made um, because the electrical companies that came in to get fixed. And so, is there any questions on that? Yeah, can you elaborate more? So there was an issue with the um, lines being put in the wrong spot, so it ended up being some extra work being done by Green Earth Landscaping and then Nofsted Brothers had did some other so it was forty eight thousand three ninety three ninety two for green earth landscaping and then fifty one ten for Nostead Brothers. And Jim might be able to elaborate what actually happened more, but that's I, I'm just gonna call it as dentals. It's it's uh, they came in entrenched and went through areas that were already somewhat or finished on the project from the other contractors. So it's for repairs or it was for repairs after they were already completed. There was sidewalks that had been formed up and then there was some of the landscaping and Hills that were dug through. 
resolve a, a very poor timing thing. Yeah. So. That should be the last transfer that we should need to do for Riverwalk, and then that way we can get the final assessments working and completed. Because we got the final numbers from Lowry's, and then the last bill payment came in this weekend, or today, or yesterday, I can't remember exactly. You probably haven't seen it because I don't think you were on it. Ashley was on it. Again, it's 53,503.92, transferring from 604 to 455. I have a motion for approval. I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Moved by Dave, second by Nicole. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. Paul? No. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Next item of business is the BC properties. So the beautification did meet last Monday. They did refer to us that the Oster property is in violation. And so that could be charged again. Do I have a motion to approve or? So what is the end process of all of this? And what's, you know, he keeps getting charged and charged and goes to court and we would hope that violates. She, and, you know. We would hope that she would clean it up. Uh, JR and I are still working trying to figure out how we can legally show through the courts that we can go in and remove the items. In most cases, in other communities, they've been able to do it with what JR has sent, but. has been a long time. My hope is with these next these two things this should help push it along. So this round through the beautification committee. Correct. Moved by Paul, seconded by 
Dave, is there any other discussion? Dave? Yes. Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Two kids are going to school here. Uh, I think I mentioned it a 
letter that all of you have seen that you know, I feel like I'm really in between the generation that most of you guys are in and the younger generation, so I offer that perspective of the younger generation. I work as a project manager at True North Steel, so I have construction experience in working with uh, projects and making sure they stay on time, on task, on schedule, and under budget. So I have to thank one for me, and I definitely feel like uh, we have a great opportunity here with Hillsboro with our geographic location and, and helping out the city to become a thriving community between Fargo and Grand Forks. And, and I just feel like I'm able to help out with that. And,
Do we have a second? I'll second that. Seconded by Nicole. To appoint Jason Paul Kim for a one year position as city commissioner. Is there any other discussion? I'd just like to concur with what Paul said that you know you guys are good guys and you want to do stuff for Hillsborough and and, uh, and I hope you take the opportunity to come back in June, next June and and uh, get signed up for a spot on the commission. It'd be great to see all four of you on that ballot. How the people can express their opinions.
Oh, it's probably my note. Next item is the facade grant on 15 West Caledonia. And JR, did the HBA have any discussion or comments back for us, or were you guys too busy with those road days? We did discuss it, and Paul, what did we decide on? No, it was the, the consensus seemed to be the consensus seemed to be that everybody was okay with it getting a second time, but they preferred that it be in like November. You know, October, right. you know, after the summer was kind of over, and if there was something still available at the end of the year, that then it would be, be okay there. So, but as far as leading on this one, I think we could make, because we've kind of been holding off on it, I think it would be right for us to uh, to probably run, run this through, if that's okay with others. Put the, put the note that this is how we're going to do it next year, moving forward, is that, you know, first time, what they kind of do at Trail County is you can always apply for more, but they're going to get preference to the new people. Okay? Right. But they actually have a deadline of, I think it's May 1st or 31st, I'm not exactly sure, but they have an early deadline. So, and we contribute that too. If you want to do it a deadline and say, hey, we're going to do this, you know, because I understand it's harder, you know, in October, November, any contract stuff. But uh, so I'm going to get a open to the date, whatever we may want to, whatever the commission feels. Hey, well, well, we're going to leave this the first come, first serve up to May, and then if you've had it once, you may apply. And, uh, and you would actually, in my opinion, they could apply. Anybody who wants to apply could be by May 31st or whatever it is, but preference would be given to those that have not had before. Does that make sense? Makes sense to me. Yep. Yeah, I'm sure for application. Yeah. Quite, quite some time yeah. too. So, so I think as far as this one goes, I think we I think we, we should make I, I so I'm okay with the, the May date for next year, uh, moving forward now. I know I know a couple people, one person I know that is gonna be putting one in yet this year, so but that's still only five, so we still have to wait for a couple more, but, but. so I think I will uh, work on a revamp then of that application so okay. that we can that up for next year's. I think there was, was it, Jared, wasn't there some other things that were mentioned that people felt they would be like to see in that? Maybe some things added to it? I think so, because yes. I know it was actually introduced to some of the members, so yeah. that was part of it that we can, once we revamp it, perhaps I'll retouch base with those folks. Touch base with you, Levi, we can incorporate those in the application. Okay. I'll try to get some. So, do I have a motion then to approve the facade grant for 15 West Caledonia Avenue. Make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Moved by Dave, seconded by Nicole. Is there any other discussion? Seeing now, proceed to vote. Paul? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? I forgot we have to swear you. That's fine. Unless That's JR great. has this right here now. <laughs> Making uh, JR his money tonight. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, the next item is the milling paving quote. So we do have two of them. Did everybody get a chance to look at them both? And once Dave got his map, correct? Right. Both sides? Yep. Both sides. <laughs> both sides. <laughs> I'll try to do some. Thank you, Ray. Um, I saw in my email. Um, the second quote is from Hubert Oy, and they don't do, per se, the small hand patching that Advance does, and a lot of Advance's quote to contain that. Um, they picked out the worst spots, and so I'll just kind of try to go through those. If you go to the Advance, Court on the top, in the northwest section of town. I'm going to pull out the two streets on St. John's Church, and that would be um, at the bottom of the first page of the Hubertoid quote. Um, 
advanced, uh, I pulled the numbers out of the square footage, the advanced quote for St. John's is 38,500. And if you go down to the bottom of the first page, like I said, on the way, you add those two together, their quote is 31,700. Um, but there, there looks like there's a big difference. I mean, it's already, it's cheaper, but they're, instead of just doing two inches of milling and then overlaying, they're actually including fabric, six inches of reclaimed concrete, and then six inches of asphalt. So to me, in, uh, for a cheaper price, you're getting a much better product. Um, you go to the advance to the second, second item. Um, I pulled out Third Avenue North, which is um, up by Tim Lee's, the Woods House, um, and I came up with 18,000 and some change on that one. And if you go to the top of Boys and add those two together, they're at 10,000. So you're at 10,000 for white, 18,000 for advanced. Okay. I think you're already seeing a trend here. Um, they have bigger equipment and uh, less man. So basically they can come in and make one pass and do something as opposed to two, three of them and, and do more hand work. Do less hand work, I should say. Um, the third item on advance um, is a little confusing. They, they, Quoted 21,645. That's a, the Water League area over by, over on 2nd Avenue Northeast. And um, Hubert Orr's bid was, it's one that's listed uh, 210 2nd Avenue, New Curve, was 2,100. So you got 2,100 compared to 21,000. Well, I think there was some confusion there, and Advance was planning on going. Two lifts of three inches a piece of six inches of asphalt, and Hubert always bid was basically two inches over the concrete that we pour in the water leak after we're done. So, um, like I said, that one's a little confusing. Um, let's go to the other two at the bottom. Okay. The fourth item on advance, which would be the north side of the event set, 3,500. Again, confusing because that is just for filling with areas of um, asphalt, and Hubert always did was actually milling it, and theirs came up at 20,600. So again, it's, it's a hard comparison because you're getting two different products. They weren't going to mill. Uh, advanced wasn't going to. No, but if you read down below, it says this is a much cheaper, uglier band-aid. And I would suggest milling and paving at eight feet in this section as well. And he did come back to me and said he'd be willing to come back and read get that. So that I'm gonna, I would guess you're going to see his numbers go up. Go up and probably. The way things are rolling here, more than 20,000 for that. It's a pretty long stretch. It's almost a full block. And then on the second page of the OI bid, and the last page, so they be the last two quotes on both of them. Um, they tried pulling out the funeral homework. And for square footage out of that one that included McDonald Drive, and I came up with 35,000 of that 46,350 would be for the two streets at the funeral home. And um, Hubert Orris was 20,000. So we're comparing 20,000 to 35,000 there. Hubert Orris does have a larger home charge, it's 8,000 compared to 2,000. So I guess what I'm seeing is those are the worst spots, um, and most of them are sunken streets next to the curb and gutter. Um, 
and I'm seeing the trend is that Hebrew oil is a, as a better quote, cheaper quote for probably a better product. What can you say about the way at the end on, on Hubert Roy about this product? Uh, yeah, I had them both look at, at um, McDonald Drive. There's, there's uh, two sub pumps that, that continue to run out there and go out into the street. Um, the curb and, the, the, you know, that curb and gutter is 20 years old going on 20 years old and it's just there's a lot of settling in it so we got highs and lows and that's why a lot of that is standing in the street it, it looks worse than it is i mean the water is deep it just stands in the street and that's where he suggested uh you may as well do the curb and gutter and and this was on the big list for the street project the big full depth repair on that section um, i just had a look at it my opinion is it's not doing anything right, right now until we get the curb and gutter fixed. So. So, so I have a general question. Okay. Um, so on Main Street, we have the curbs and then we have that little kind of that ramp up and that ramp down. Is any of this like a, a redo or a, is this just resurfacing or is this redoing some of those? Curves too. No curves. It's just all asphalt. And like I said last meeting, we could do this, and next year if they we decide to go with curb and gutter repair, there could be sections of this that are ripped out. But I only bring it up because Hillsborough days, I sat next to a lady in a wheelchair, and she had described how hard it is to get up and down on some of these roadways and streets. So just keep that in mind. For redoing the curves and stuff, that we put those little ramps in for those. Yeah, those that's pretty much standard if you do a new okay. street project. Okay, I didn't project. know that, so awesome. And I remember if you were you on when probably not, probably not so. when our bid came in for the total that was part of it, but it was why it was a little high. Yeah, good, good, good one point million dollars. I think. I think yeah. Oh, yeah. Because if we do a full depth, you had to redo the those curtain gutters if I remember right, wasn't it? Correct. Right. Okay. So either way, both of these could come out of the municipal or 453 fund, which there's 804, 8047. Correct. Right. What was that? 453. 453. Isn't that a 453? It could come on a 453, yes. Which is part of that period of funds. That's what it's this is what it's meant for, yes. My recommendation. Um choice between the two, I'd go with the way. Um, some of these areas are, are tough. I mean, next by next year, there's, there's uh, uh, the, the garbage truck continues to, to, the water stands there, which makes it soft, and then the garbage truck comes in and heats it up. So um, I guess it's up to you guys if you want to pick away on stuff, or if you want to just wait until everything goes or what, I, I don't know. Um, what I saw for a total on that, I thought I had the total was 115. Dave's got it. 150. 150. 115. Yeah. After I looked at the second. And I, if you decide to go with those spots, I would like you to add uh, some contingencies there because there is at least one spot that they, neither one of them gave me a bid on, it would be over by the shop, uh, by um, uh, Von Gazette's place, it's in the same thing. That's real bad. Yeah, and uh, that area, and then I'm starting to get nervous about uh, 
the street between uh, Senex and uh, North Side Subway and the East Holland Lane coming into Hillsborough. I think I think Caledonia hopefully will hold together for another year, but it's getting tough. Our goals to that. And they did spread out, and there's just so much, so much traffic and so much weight coming through there. And, uh, um, but so I would like you to throw some in for, like I said, contingencies, incidentals, and when they're here, um, a couple of more of those spots maybe that, the, that I don't have numbers. That would be more of the only surface part. No one saw the fabric or anything. No, just uh, just a million, and some of it could actually be done by advance and they would just come in with a finer mix and just do some hand patching like they did last year. And I'm assuming they're they're booking um gig full. So when this is going to be done I'm not quite sure. Are you thinking like ten percent, twenty percent are you thinking? Yeah I was I even 125. If you said 115 now, to go to 125. Yeah, that's why I was asking about the milling and resurfacing because you know it depends on the like. I would put it in the contingency of at least this 28.6. So that would be up to 143.6. Exactly. So yeah. I would I would think would cover that. We could even say 150. That's a, that would be good. Just, just cover, cover my butt anyway. I think next year what we need to make sure that we do if we don't do it is we need to plan that we're going to have 150 or 100,000 in the ballot. And in the 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 of that. Yeah. If we don't use it, we don't use it. I agree. Then we just got to keep planning that every year, whether we do curb and gutters, whether we do whatever, to, just to make sure that we keep going, keep at it, otherwise we're going to end up with 10 million. 20 million probably. 20 um, because we need to keep doing maintenance on the streets, I'm going to make the motion to accept the bid from Hubert Oy for 115000 with the contingency to, what did you say, up to 150? Yep. 150000 And you want it out of the 453000 Yes. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Can I have you uh, change that? Can, can you put OI and or advanced up to 150 in case? Because OI's not going to maybe do some of that. I could get I could get advanced maybe to come in and do some of that smaller stuff. Okay. Which would be the contingency stuff. So you'd be working with both companies. Well, hopefully. But the main bid would be through OI. Yes. Yeah. Is there a second? I'll second. Probably moved and seconded to approve the main bid through OI and then up to 150000 using either OI or advance to finish up the work. Does that sound like the challenge? Yep. Yep. Is there any other discussion? Seeing none, proceed to vote. Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Next item is the 4th of July fireworks. Usually we've done 2,000 in the past, whether we want to keep it at that or additional, being that prices have went up. And then we pay each fireman that helps 200 or 150. I think it was 100 last year, I believe. You could check. Uh, yeah, I can check. See it. I believe it's a hundred. But I think it was a hundred. <coughs> I'll make the motion. Is there a second? I'll second it. Probably would second it to spend two thousand for for the Fourth of July fireworks show, and then a hundred dollars for each individual's fireman that helps with that. Any other discussion? Who decides where they're getting everything from? Is it the fireman? You mean the fire the fireworks? I think yeah. they're working with. Uh, okay. I don't know if they still work with. The, the got or not. Meyer. Yeah, Keith Meyer. Yeah. So. Uh, 
have these always, has this request always gone through the city only, or has it ever been split up between HBH and HBA pays a small amount of yeah. Okay. There are some others that you pay. I just can't remember who it was, because I know that I heard back when this wasn't maybe too long ago, but uh, that they were kind of going back and forth a little bit between Baytop and Keith. So I don't know where they're at with that for sure anymore. I'm not even sure. I'm assuming they're still I'm assuming they're still selling up there, but I'm sure Tom would be able to answer. Yeah, I'm not sure who makes that decision on buying that. So. Is there any other discussion? Dave? Yes. Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. The last item that we have on our agenda are our insurance agency. Is there any discussion on the agents that we presented? So the price is the same as all the Correct. Right. North Dakota Insurance Reserve sets the price, and so we pay the agent what they say, and then the agent would get uh, a factor of whatever ender for um, fire tornado says that it's going to be. So it wouldn't matter who we went with, it, the price would be all the same. Mm -hmm. Would the price and the coverage all the same? Yes. It's about the, the, the agent um, and how they're servicing and helping the, the city with their business. Like I said, the reason that was brought up was that with uh, retiring and not necessarily having the business in town, that was part of the last one, so we had opened up to any agents in the community to come and present to you guys as to what they can do for the community. So. Well, kind of like picking a commissioner, they're, you know, they're all fine companies, and, uh, but uh, I'm going to make a motion that we go with the uh, Farmers Union Insurance. Okay. Sure. Second. Probably motion second. Is there any other discussion? Nicole? Yes. Paul? Yes. Dave? Yes. Any yes for me? Motion carries. Congratulations, Ryan. And all of you work with Sarah and Ashley to get that switch made when it needs to happen. Is there anybody in the audience tonight that would like to address the commission?
see if we can get something working. Especially today would have been nice. I'm sure we would have been full. So. With that grant, when do they start the repairs on that? We could start any time. So we, that was the other thing that I'm working on. I was supposed to here last week, and I had, he had something come up, so I'm waiting to hear back on Probably the same again, you wouldn't have anybody starting their until August, September. Would they close that down, probably? Or? Right. Well, and in the past, so we've kept it open until October, so that was the other no, game. Well, they probably won't now. So. Right. It'd be nice on hot days like this. It would be. Um, which that reminds me, there was another grant that came out. You're going to have to tell Jim Murphy to quit sending me stuff. No, Jim, don't quit. They're grants. <laughs> uh, there's another grant for the Commerce Department, um, which would be um, it's open until August 31st, and that one is the same thing that could be used for pools. And what I'd like to do with that, if your agreement, is look into it and see if we can get Abby again to write a grant, since she's very good at that, what it would cost um, to possibly put in a splash pad for down at that area. That's kind of my hope and, and it's trying to upgrade and get that thing where we can keep it with some funds. And that again is another uh, up to I think it's fifteen thousand yeah. Up to fifteen thousand? Or hundred and fifty thousand, sorry. And that's a match, too, or? That's a match, too, again, yeah. yeah. As long as you're okay with me looking into that, I will. Otherwise, I won't. I'm fine with it. Yeah. Okay. So I'll keep looking at that. All right. I'm glad you're here. She's going to come back from the Is there anything else for the go to the order or anybody else in the in the audience? Yes. Will Jason be automatically assigned Mike's formal portfolio? That was I was gonna figure we should talk to him about it before the next meeting and then we can assign after that if we need to do any changes. To make sure that we can make things work in your schedule tomorrow before just signing you. I just remember one thing. You guys drive by the Army, look at the corner, be the north east corner of the building. The bricks are starting to push out. If you have to drive by there, take a look at it. Let's see what you think. Does it need some tuck pointing? Pardon? Does it look like it needs tuck pointing? It needs something. We also need to have somebody come in and look at this floor. Oh, yes, the floor is terrible. Did they do anything with the lights in there? Did they do anything with the lights in there? No. We did that before. I mentioned it. Also, there's some flashing up on the end, uh, trim flashing up above the roof line that's flapping down there. Now we're, he would have the building and grounds, and now we're talking. That's about. why we're talking. About it. No. I just remember this. <laughs> we're giving him this long list of things. I want this done, Mike. Okay, is there any other things? Do I have a, if not, then do I have a motion to adjourn? I'll make the motion. Is there a second? Second. Move by day, second by Nicole. All in favor say aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you.